Sorry, cranes up. Everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you're all having a great day so far. Oh, I've had a pretty good morning. Can't complain too much. Um, I am a bit late today because I had some stuff I had to take care of before I went live, so apologize for that, but that's a, not too bad, just about 10 minutes or so. But, um, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, one thing I noticed... Okay, so I was trying to do the system where you could number every point that could possibly be on the collider. And then from that, we could easily find vertices that can be shared. Unfortunately, I did miss a couple possibilities. Well, there's the obvious one where, let me see. Um, where my math didn't take these points into account, but that's not really a big deal. Um, okay, it's gonna be hard to show in 2D, so I'll, I think I'll just explain it in editor. I don't know if there's any... Um, instances of it in this current setup. No. Okay, so let's, if I add, oh wait. Wait, okay, maybe I'm wrong and this can't ever happen. Okay, so I was thinking that like, if there was another hexagon right here that just touched on this corner, then the insets, like these cliffs wouldn't match and, and there'd be like two diverging points, but I don't think that can ever happen now that I look at it here and try to construct a thing about it. So let's see, so... Yeah, because a hexagon, they always have to share at least one side, and so that would mean that they would share a cliff face, so... I think that for every point, they'd never... not touch under this current system. Yeah, I think that's um, pretty much true. Okay, so maybe this... Okay, my uh, idea was not actually a problem. Because okay. I was thinking that, like like I said, if we had another cliff here, then this would maybe diverge. And so these two points, which would have the same number on our graph, but they wouldn't actually have the same position. But I don't... You know, looking at it again... I don't think that could ever happen because we see that no matter what the hexagons always share at least one side so now i'm thinking is there any possibility that like if i had a certain tile type that i might want these edges to not match up like maybe if i had like an ice block or something but i guess if that ever happened then i could just have that specific block have its own separate collider Yeah, so I think we're safe to go forward with us. So, okay, so what I need to do... Okay, so there's this point that's not taken into account right now. And it kind of complicates things. Okay, so let me think about this a bit. What would be... So there's like... Well, there's a bunch of different possibilities. This bottom row is easy. And then anything that's not... Okay, well, it looks like really the biggest differences have to do with the rows. Okay, because the bottom row is like this, and then the middle rows have this extra 
point. And then the top row is obviously different because we always use the top of the hexagon. Uh, it actually has an extra point at the end. Five, six, seven. Oh, well, it's the same as the bottom. I'm trying to think if there's a might be an easier way. Well, I think that kind of the way I'm doing it now is fine. Okay, so let's see. That's fine. Point. That's fine. So it's really. Yeah, this is fine. Although the number of point columns is now different for every row, so this doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, okay, let's say in middle. So this would be the number of hex columns plus times two plus two because we can see here that every hexagon has two and then there's these two on the side. Okay, so the number of points in a layer is this, and then we have to subtract two. Yeah, so subtract two for the top and bottom rows, which have one less point. So the hexagon row is not, can't just, yeah, so neither of these we can just calculate super easily. The hex layer we can do simply. Okay, so the hex row, let's see. F flat point is less than Number of point columns in the middle minus one, which would mean. Okay, so let's look here. The number. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, it has to be less than seven. Okay, so that's correct. Or it'd be on the bottom row. This would be. Bottom row. Then else if flat point is greater than or equal. Okay, so it's this times the number of rows minus. Okay, so I basically want to find this what this first point is. So I could find it just by the number of points in the middle rows times the number of rows and then subtract one off for this bottom row. Okay, so yeah, if it's greater than Number of points in middle times number of rows. Oh no, it'd be number of hex hexagon rows. And then uh subtract one. Okay, so let's just go through the math here real quick. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times three is 24, minus one is 23. So I gotta check if it's greater than or equal to. Okay, and then otherwise it's in a middle row and we can find the actual row. would be um, the first we would want to subtract off this first row and then divide by the number of points in the columns.
Then we'd have to add one back to it to take into account skipping this first row. Okay, so anyway, that's pretty simple. So for the bottom row, the only special case is this last point. So, okay, so yeah, this is pretty simple. Flat point divided by two, and then um, corner index is flat point mod two. Okay. And so if hex column, one second, I just got that email I need to check real quick. Oh, sorry, I was muted <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so I just had to take that email real quick, but it's no big deal. Um, anyway, so we want to check to see if this hex column is the last in the row. So we would see... Uh, actually, we want to see if it's before the last in the row. So we can kind of just use this same script. Okay, and the hexagon row is zero, so we don't even have to deal with that. Unfortunately, because of all the changes, we can't really reuse the code that simply, but... Okay, so this is trying to get the southeast corner. Oh yeah, for the last one, okay. Okay, so in the top row, we kind of do the same thing, except to get the column, first I have to subtract out this value. So since I have to use that multiple times, let's do this math multiple, or up here. 
So um, second row start is number of points. Minus one, is that right? So it'll be eight. Oh yeah, okay, so this starts at seven. And then uh, last row start is this value. Okay, so that way I don't have to do that math multiple times. Okay, so the top row, the hexagon column is flat point. Minus last row start divided by two and oh, is that? yeah, so we'll just go like this. Then we'll take care of this last point. And then hex. Oh yeah, this corner index. I don't think I actually use. I calculate it again here. should be mod 2. I think I again can kind of reuse this. Okay so yeah it's adding the layer and then the hexagon column and then the row here and if the quarter index is even then it's northwest which this side if it's odd it's just north and then this um <clears throat> this last one same type of thing except yeah it's just adding in the last column which i think i'll just wrap this in parentheses even though it's not really needed just to make it a little more obvious what's going on Okay, and so for the middle row, it's a little more complicated because we, again, have this extra point. So we should see if it's the first thing in the middle row that we actually have to use the northwest corner of the hexagon in the same, or the first hexagon in the column, or the first hexagon in the row, sorry, but for the row beneath us. So let's see if flat point oh, I guess let's see how would I check if it's the first okay let's do this point index or I guess point column is a flat point minus second row start modulo number of point columns in the middle. Okay, and if point column is zero, then we use the special case, which is, okay, so the hex column is just zero and the row is this hex row but for the row beneath us. And we use the Northwest. Okay, otherwise, um, otherwise we kind of do the same thing we did for the top and bottom. But um, we, of course we have to subtract one. So hex, Column equals 
point column minus one divided by two. Then corner index is point column minus one mod two. And then we do something similar like this. Maybe I should pull this code out into a separate function. Okay, so it's a hex layer, hex column, times the row. And this other one is just the last X column. Um, maybe I can do this a little easier. Oh no, we know we have to pass this anyway. So it's the last X column times the row and northeast. Oh, except this should be southwest, yeah, and south and the southeast. I don't know. We can't really share a lot of code because here we changed the enumerations. We could pass in the three possibilities, but I don't know if that'd actually be that helpful. So it's a bit shame that this function is kind of messy. But yeah, translating these points to the hexagon is not as straightforward as I would have hoped. Sorry for knocking that. All right, so. Okay, um, I have a feeling that this is gonna be kind of buggy. So maybe a good thing to do would be to go through and test every point. and see if they kind of make sense or if it throws an error. But actually, well, I'm trying to think, would it be easier to do that visually or just print out everything? Let's do four and i equals zero, i less than battle, board, map, length, Okay, so we'll do a string. Okay, well this is like the number of hexagons. It's not the same as the number of points. Oh yeah, because we're also going to need to go backwards for the other way. Is there, I'm just trying to think if there's a better way to do this because yeah, going backwards is also going to be annoying because I'll need to be able to transform from the hex position and a corner to this point index and let me see how I do that. Well, it might be a little easier because it's like okay, if it's the first row and on a bottom, yeah, it's kind of the same type of thing. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. Probably the easiest way to go the other way around would be try to make a formula just looking at the hexagon. And then the hexagon index plus whatever number would be the corner index. I wonder, is there a way I could do something like that? OK, 
Okay, well actually, let's make like a helper class that will do this. Okay, so let's do point lattice helper. And I think I'll just move this. Okay, and so we have world position, then we we'll also need to um, public int get corner index. And probably we'll actually work with it this way, so it'd be cell index layer. And then hex corner. Okay, and so for this hexagon zero, this one, I just don't know if this, the index is kind of just you that you take the hexagon number multiply it by two and then add a number to it so either zero one or two and i think that's sort of correct but then this hexagon okay so this is zero one two three and so if i multiply by two it'd be six and so then we we're missing one so we have to like add one to it okay, so zero one two three four five six times two is twelve and then we're missing even more So yeah, I don't know. It'd be kind of nice even if for these I could just have like a dummy number to make the indexing easier. But then nothing would actually use that number. So maybe, maybe that's the way to go. So we'd have like index zero out here that's never actually used. Because it doesn't really make any difference. And that would clean up this. You know, that's a good point because for these point lattices, it doesn't really matter if we use hexagons that are actually outside of the board to calculate these positions. Okay, so if I did that, okay, this is going to be kind of annoying because I'm going to have to change all these numbers. So zero is like a nonsensical point that will never be used. Okay, so where would the extra point be here on this top row? Well, I think what we do is we'd actually base it on these hexagons up here and then we just have this extra thing okay so is there an easy way okay I think this point might still be kind of annoying to deal with Fifteen. 
No, this is riveting stuff. Okay, fingers can't find the keys. Okay, so now each row has the same number of points, but there's just two points that aren't ever used. It would be nice if I could somehow... I guess it kind of works the same, because we, we just have this ghost hexagon here. So then, should I actually have the numbering start on this side? Oh, well, no, they should all start. Okay, so this should start like that, and that way... Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Okay, so... But I want to... Yeah, I'm trying to... So this is like a ghost. So we're going to just have these ghost hexagons that aren't actually going to have, like they're not going to be on the map, but we'll just use them to make um, this algorithm easier, I think. So really, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to... Let's actually just get rid of this whole thing. We still have it in the other other class if I need to get back to it. Um, but we can use leave that bit at the beginning because that's this is still true. But should I include the ghosts? I wonder. I guess it just depends how I do this. Okay, but if we do have the ghost, then we have these extra up here. So that'd be one extra row and then one extra column. Okay, I wonder... Uh, let me see. It'd probably be easier if I could somehow switch. Oh, I don't think I can because this point is on that edge. I was going to say if I could somehow switch these columns over here so that I didn't have to use negative one for the ghost column, but... Oh, uh, well, if we... Well, there's just this point here. So I think... If I tried to move these over here, then I think I'd, what I'd have to do is move the row down here, which would give a negative one to the row, so... Okay, so anyway, um, at least now the number of point columns is always the same. That's just the real row size time, or plus... Or plus one times two, because yeah, it would be eight with a row size of six, or three, I mean. Um, let's actually just put real at the beginning. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's a bit simpler. We don't have different number of rows, or a different number of columns for a different number of rows. And then the number of point rows is this the real number of point, or hex rows plus one, because we just have that. 
Yeah, we have this extra ghost. One, two, three, four, yeah. Okay, so let me see what I need to find. Yes, I need the layer size. And then, um, okay, so the flat point is the point mod, the point layer size. All right, and now we just have two possibilities. Either it's the bottom corner or the, or the south corner or the south east corner. So I just got to somehow change this point index into the hexagon index. Okay, and the row is, or the column is simple. It's just um, the point index divided by two, and then I've got to subtract one to take these ghost ones into account. Well, I guess, do I? Yeah, I've got a modulo by the number of point columns. Okay, so I guess I should do it this way. So the point column is the flat point number of point columns, and then point row is flat point divided by number of point columns. And the hex column is just this point column divided by two minus one. And then a corner index is the point column mod two. Okay, so now I can do, I gotta get the row, I guess. So the hex row is, let me see. So it's a point column divided by the number or the size of a point row. Oh yeah, this should be 31. Oh, I guess the hex row. Hex row is the same as the point row, isn't it? I'll just, even though it's a little redundant, I'll just type that out. Okay, so the, really the only thing I have to switch between is the corner index now. So I'll just return, get world position. Again, the hex index is the I guess I gotta get the hex layer, and that would just be the same as. Um, same as the point layer. I don't actually have that, so. So I have the layer size already, so. Okay, and then I need to add the row, which is the X row times battle board row size, and then I just need to add the column. Okay, and then the corner is corner index 
zero, so this is south, and then southeast. And that's it. So that's way simpler than the other one. Just using some ghost hexagons to take care of this. So it is a little strange because like this hexagon column can be negative one. Um, okay, so yeah, that is one thing. So I can't actually return or use the hex index for this, but that's really fine. I need to just use, let's just use an actual hex position. That's already built up. Okay, so now I can actually just give the hex column, hex row, and the layer. Okay, so this is even simpler. Yeah, I like that even better. Okay, the reason I couldn't use the index is because these ghosts columns don't actually have an index on the board because they don't exist on the board so yeah so but just using a hexagon is fine so do i even need okay i do use this i'm just going to check to make sure i actually use all of these values okay so now to change from this to get world position, or yeah, change from an actual cell to a point index. So first I need to change these. Oh, so it's gonna give me, I wanna be able to take a hexagon in any corner and translate it to these indexes. So what I need to do I have this index and then multiply it by some number. I wonder if I can always find the offset. So let's see. If this is zero. Then that's one, two, three. And then eight, nine, ten. So well, I guess yeah, these indexes would depend on the size of the board, so maybe I won't do it that way. Probably the easiest way to do it is to somehow change these values to, um, like, decompose these values so we always just either have south or southeast. So let's see. X position... And this will be cell index, and then we'll just add the layer in here. Might as well. Okay, so. I guess we'd have to do something different for every corner. So if it's north, let's see. So the north corner is the same as the southeast corner for the column. Up one row and left one column. So let me see. Okay, so let's do northeast. This is the same as up one row, same column. Yes, that's pretty simple. Uh, 
it's probably even easier way I could do this. So I need to go, just move to my northwest neighbor. That way I don't have to calculate that stuff myself. Yeah, so if I want to north, yeah, I go to northwest neighbor. Okay, and this one I just go to my northeast neighbor. Okay, so what about, oh, so north, northeast, I guess northwest. Okay, so northwest is this one and that's the same. Okay, so I need to move also to my northwest neighbor. Okay, and I also have this, I should be figuring out the corner index too. The, the corner index is one if we want the southeast, which we do here, right? Yeah, and it's zero if we want the south, which we do here and also there. Okay, and then south, we don't have to change the hexagon, but we'll need to set corner index to zero. Southeast, um, same, we set the corner index to one, but we don't change our hexagon position. And then southwest, let's see. So it's this corner, so we just need to move to my western neighbor and then corner index to one. Uh, I don't want to type all that out again, so. Okay, so now I can easily transform this to... Um, corner index. Which would be, so, it's a hexagon column times two. Oh, I gotta add one to take into account this negative. So hexagon plus one times two. And then, then we just add the row size because that's the same. Okay, so I think I'll need both of these. Okay, so for the layer, we just do the point layer size times hex layer, then plus hex are, I guess, um, number of point columns times the hex row, and then two times hex column plus one, and then we add the corner index onto it. Okay, so it's kind of... Okay, so basically, we just add the layer size onto it, and then we have the number or the size of a point row. And luckily we don't have to change the hexagon row. Um, the reason we have to add one here is because we have this ghost column that we just used to make things easier to calculate, but this is actually negative one. 
but we want these to start at zero. And then we add the quarter index at the end just to if we to select if we want the south or southeast corner. Okay, so yeah, I think this is much better. It's still kind of complicated, but... Oh, I did actually delete that, but it's okay. So now I'll get a reference to the point lattice helper. Another way to do this would be to actually just have, like, create a new point class. And that way I wouldn't have to store these as indexes, but I don't really know if that would help a whole lot. It's not a huge deal. Okay. So that was fun. Um... Yeah, I'm going to need to test this, but I think the easiest way to test it will actually be just to see visually what it creates. So, yeah, we could loop through it, but it's going to be hard to find mistakes that way, just from print reading text. Okay, so I guess we'll just need to do the Collider Triangle Creator now, uh, which will be fun. <laughs> This is what I'm tired of doing is making these mesh builders, but okay, we just got a couple more. Okay, so I think let's grab this code to help me out. Yeah, I don't need another curly brace right here. Uh, yeah, I don't need this from Unity. That was just for the be the parent for the models. So I think I'm happy with that. Okay, and this is a cell worker, so it works on cell tasks. And what does it need? Okay, so I have the collider tries. I guess it needs um, the cliff heights and the stack. Is that it? It doesn't really care about the insets because Oh, also, yeah, I noticed that the point lattice helper does not take the insets into account. Okay, yeah, that should probably fix that. Oh, it doesn't need itself, it needs the tr block terrain data. And so here, like this is just the normal uh, position. What I actually need to do is add that inset. So do vector three standard. Okay, and I can transform from this hex to. Oh. Okay, so this is another annoying thing. I'm gonna need to like, because again, these hexagon columns and rows might be. Yeah, because they could be negative, and obviously the insets aren't recorded for that. So what I need to do is transform these backwards. I, yeah, I still think this is useful using the ghost hexagons, but it's still a little annoying. 
Well, let's not worry about that for now. Um, we'll do the insets later. Because, yeah, it'll be good to test just to make sure all this code actually makes sense. But anyway, this needs the cliff heights and... Stack. Alright, so where do I go from here? I think I might just do something really simple because I'd like to test the, the points and everything. So I think I'll just have a really simple triangle or collider that will basically just be flat on the bottom of the world. So let me see. Also... Shouldn't I have an extra layer here because I have the top and the bottom? Okay, so maybe... Okay, so the actual point layer won't be the same as the hex layer after all. Uh, the point layer would be... Well... No, this is fine because it's just if the we're at the top of the last layer, this layer size will actually be greater than the real layer sent here. Um, how do I... Encode that. So I guess this layer should just always be bottom or the top all right so I'd rather use the top here as the basis but I don't really want to have negative indexes for the bottom so we kind of have to use the bottom it's a little unfortunate because it's the opposite of the way the insets work but and that's just how it is going to be. Um, so I guess I'll just call this layer um, for bottom. I don't really know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but... Oops. So actually, yeah, this layer size could be outside the bounds, but it doesn't really... It actually doesn't affect any of this math. But I guess here we'd see that if it's layer zero, then there's no inset. And then any other time we'd have to get the inset from the layer beneath the one that's in the hex. But we'll worry about that later. Anyway, so what I want to do is just for int c equals zero less than six. So I'm just going to add a triangle, a very simple one. Okay, and the cell index, um, how do I store the triangles? I forget. Okay, so it is a array. So that means I'll need a temporary list here. Is it? 
worth it to like convert to an array and everything? I don't know. This really could just be a list because we don't know how many triangles are going to be in this cell until we calculate it. That's probably better. Okay, so let's see. Var cell equals train cells cell index. Um, if cell dot collider tries is null, we'll create it. I do the same thing here. Okay, so I guess I actually need to pass in the cell index. Let's actually just do the cell. So train data. Oh yeah, it's block train data, isn't it? And then let's pass in the owner. And this is the block ID of the triangle. Or the block ID that should be returned to the user if they pick that triangle on the mesh. Okay, so cell dot collider tries add A. And the order here is important because they have to wind around clockwise in the direction that you want it visible. So for example, if we're looking down here, we want this triangle to be visible. So we want it to wind clockwise, so it should go from the center up like that. So what I would do is add triangle cell. Okay, and yeah, one thing is there's no point for the center, which is fine. I don't think I'm going to need that point because the collider will always just go across but what I actually need to do is we start at this and then we loop around so we actually only need four triangles and I need the point helper don't I Let's, um, let's wait, because I don't even know if this is going to need the database or the battle. So. Okay, so the corner will start at the north corner and to go clockwise around it. Um, this one is this, what's well, this index plus one and then this index plus two plus C. Zero, um, so C plus one. And we've got to convert that to a corner. Is that right? Let me see think so we start at zero and then we want to create this so zero that should go like that and the next one goes like this that and like that so yeah um, no okay I was getting confused because this is four but we don't actually reach four yeah so it's obvious and then the next one is the same thing except C plus two then I just got to send the owner, which will just be this cell index. It doesn't really matter at this point. We won't take the layer into account. And... Yeah, 
Okay, so I don't need these at all. Okay, so that's kind of simple. So let's go ahead and create these classes in the block train generator. Actually, nothing will happen just yet, but um, there's still one other class I have to do. And then workers, add context. Okay, so the collider mesh creator waits for this Turing task all collider tries to um, be completed, but right now that doesn't actually happen. So I need to have one other class that basically all it does is just queries every cell to see when um, certain dependencies are done, and then it would, if all of them are done, then it would set the collider tr tries are done for the Turing task. So let me see, collider, try, task, I guess forwarder, uh, I don't know, checker is fine. This one doesn't really do much work, but it's, uh, I think it's easier to have this helper class instead of having the collider mesh creator check every cell itself. Okay, so... Wait, what is this at the beginning? So it's checking to see if create cells has not been finished. That's not right, is it? Although I do have this. Oh no, it's checking to make sure that crates that cells have been created. Okay, that's fine. And then we'd also want to check that the collider tries has been or has not been completed yet okay, let's bring this down so if this is true then we'll want to look through every cell so let's see private cell tasks cell depths so we want to see that the collider tries and also insets are finished. Okay, so if that's not done, then we'll just break. Uh, okay, I guess I gotta do this. Ooh, all complete is start with true and then if any of them aren't complete we'll set all complete to false and break and then if all complete then we set terrain complete we just set that flag to true okay so now i just gotta add this to the block terrain worker list Okay, so now we should, well, even still, we won't actually get a collider yet because I don't think that the collider make our, this, um, yeah, the mesh creator, act, it just creates the mesh object. It doesn't actually create the game object for it. Oh yeah, I just got to change this account. I actually don't use this. 
Okay, so... I need to get a reference to the collider mesh. have the block parent yeah so this is already a mono behavior so i might as well just have a reference to the mesh filter okay what was the old system because it was i remember it's a little more complicated than you would think because you have to like reset the collider to get it to update Okay, so yeah, it just resets the mesh. Okay, so it's gonna be a little uh, easier here because I don't have to worry about having separate chunk meshes at least for now oh this one's obsolete where's the thing that actually creates this or uh, maybe did i just go through and mark everything in here obsolete okay yeah, that's what I did. Okay, so this block parent should just have public mesh filter. Uh, wait, this will just be the collider mesh. Although, wait, it's not a mesh filter, it's a mesh collider. Um, and so... I'll just get a reference to it here. Private block parent. Object of type. Maybe there's a better way to do this, but I think it will do for now. Uh, what's it not like? Oh. That S in there was confusing it. So what I do is when we're done here, I would set this mesh to the collider. So parent dot collider dot shared mesh equals mesh. Okay, so that's good. Um, let's go ahead and create game object for the collider. Freezing right now because it's compiling. Okay, there we go. I really wish that Unity would, I don't know, have a better way to let you know that it's colliding besides it's having in, or that it's compiling with besides it's having the input freeze. But it's not a huge deal, I guess. Okay, so I need a mesh collider, and I think that's it. Um. Yeah, it's not actually physical, it's just we're using it. We'll fly. Or mouse picking. I just noticed it said this was unused. There's going to be a lot of things to come and fix later. Sorry. 
it's gonna recompile just because that one change. Put that in there. And let me see. Okay, so we got some null reference errors, which I guess is not surprising. So the try owners. Okay, so I guess we can just add this here. If train dot collider try owners is null. Let's go ahead and clear it up front. I don't really... This owner builder list I think is a little useless. Now that I think about it, because I could just add stuff directly. Because it's not like I skip any... triangles. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay, so it made it all the way through. So if I look at the collider, okay, it actually worked. Wow. I'm kind of surprised I didn't get any bugs. But yeah, I don't see anything wrong with the vertices. Um, let me see. Does it have a count, like a vertex count? 160 vertices. So let's see. Um, got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 times... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So seventeen times nine. I don't know. Okay, that's pretty close. Where would be? Where's the discrepancy? Oh, uh, you know, did I count this right? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, I did. I wonder where those extra ones are coming from. But I mean, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, these are like even numbers. I wonder if the, it just rounds up. That probably is what's going on here because I find it hard to believe I have exactly 256 triangles. Although, so it's four times eight. Oh, well, actually that might add up perfectly. So eight times eight times four. Okay, so that actually makes sense, but seems like the vertices were either we have some extra or it's rounded up so we're supposed to have 17 times 9 so i miss i got like seven extra and seven is such a weird number i don't really know how i could just have seven extras so um, I don't think I'll worry about it right now. Okay, so I guess now comes the fun part. I've got to figure out how I want to do the colliders for this. Well, it's really not that difficult. Uh, we just... Yeah, we don't even have to worry about it at this point. 
keeping track of these indexes because we have that point index system. So I just would go by every exposed cliff. Oh, hey again, Zaka Television. Thanks for hosting. How are you doing today? But yeah, so for every exposed cliff, I would just create a little collider for that. And it doesn't matter what order I do. And then I just have the top for the exposed block. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. Oh, where is it? This. Let's um, close all about this just to kind of clean up. So we'll still have this code, but only for the top layer. So I guess we can do int top. So the top layer we know is the stack size for this cell. Okay, so let's just try this out and see what pops up. Um, so I need to add the layer here. Oh, no, I just pass it. Yeah, I thought that far ahead. And so the cell index, this it needs to change to the block index. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. The reason this little fly is very interested in my pop filter. If it keeps bothering me, I might <laughs> mute the mic and swat it away, but it's not a huge deal right now. Okay, so... Well, this is actually simple. It's just going to be the cell. Well, it'll be this layer minus one, because if there's one value in it, we actually want the cell that's in block layer zero, so... Um, yeah, but we got to add the battle. Oh, we don't have a reference to it. I only need this because I need the board size. Metal board layer size times up layer minus one. All right, so let's just check this out. Now the top or those hexagons should just stick to the top of the blocks. Oops, got a null reference. Oh, probably because I don't get a reference to the battle yet. Let's just regenerate the constructor because there's nothing interesting in there yet. So the raycaster is not happy, but oh, I shouldn't have closed it. I still want to see what's going on. Probably the raycaster is complaining because I don't have any terrain data set up to it. Um, but okay, so now we can see yeah, the tops of the colliders are sticking to the top of the hexagon. Okay, so now when I check the mesh. I should still have 256 triangles, but yeah, we'll have a lot more vertices because some of them, or a lot of them can't be shared because they're not touching. All right, so now I just gotta do the cliff sides so really I just need to go through every layer um, so for int l equals zero less than cell stack length and then if the side is exposed so you know, we gotta have to go by every side side less than six okay and again the cliff height kind of goes from the bottom so um, if 
S is greater than or equal to the... Well, actually, I have this top layer already, so I might as well just use it. Top layer minus the cell cliff heights. Um, S. Here, I did this backwards. This should be if L is greater than or equal. Then I just need to build these triangles here and... Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and calculate the block index here. Um, we ought to just be that times L. Okay, what's it complaining about? The name L does not exist. Oh, it's because of this extra parenthesis right there. Okay, so first corner needs to be... Let's see. This triangle, so... This is, I guess it depends on what corner. Um, okay, so I'm going by side. So this one would be, I've got to view it from this angle. So, okay, so this is side zero and corner zero is on this side, but if I'm viewing it from here, Corner zero is actually here. So this is the clockwise. But I want this triangle to be clockwise, so I've got to go like this. Okay, so let's make a note. So this is side plus one over here. And then this is side. Okay, and then the layer, this is just the layer. I guess I'll do a L to make that more obvious. And then the one above me is layer plus one. Oh, come on. Okay, so we'd go this point, which is side plus one L, and then side plus one L plus one, and then side L. Was that? Yeah, that was clockwise. Okay, so L. Okay, let's see. Um, int left corner is. This side, so plus one. So left corner, and then L plus one, left corner. Oh, I've got a transform to it. That. The next is right corner, and I pass the block index. And so the next one is start here. So L and S and then go like that. Right corner. It's one left corner, then L plus one right corner. Okay, so I think that would do it. Let's check. Okay, we did get a null reference. Oh, it's the Raycaster. Um, I guess I'll comment that out because we'll need to come back, update that anyway. 
but now at least we won't get exceptions. to see okay there it looks a little yeah, I think it's okay um oh I know what's wrong I didn't loop yeah so right here when I add one I need to make sure to do mod six So I don't see, yeah, right here there's not, like I want to make sure that there's not extra faces where they don't need to be and it looks good. And there's not any cliffs that don't have colliders that need them. At least I can tell. So if I pull this out so I can see where my ray cast is going. Okay, so that's the only other thing I need to check, because it could be possible, like if you look down here, you can see that the ray cast changes to green, which means it's colliding. So it's possible that the ray cast could have, or these triangles could have been wound wrongly, and then the ray cast would just move through that mesh. Let's check the top too. It looks um, good. Of course, the owning triangle could be wrong, but... That's not going to be very difficult to fix. Okay, so now obviously we can see, especially with these green blocks, that the collider does not match up with the inset. Um, if we bring it back. And that's just because the collider don't take the insets into account. And I guess since these can kind of get kind of pretty large discrepancy, it's probably a good idea for that to be taken into, into account. As I said before, it's uh, going to add a wrinkle into the algorithm, but I think it's just how it has to be. So let me see. Oh, that's the wrong thing. The point lattice helper. Because, okay, so now I've got to transform these hex and corners that are only south and southeast to if the hex position is invalid, I just need to change that to be a valid hex again, which is not really that difficult. Let's see. If hex column is less than zero, we only have two possibilities. The hex can be less than zero, or the row can be greater than the maximum. So if it's less than zero, we just need to move over and then change uh, a southeast point to a southwest point. That's really it. So that's not as bad as I thought. So column. Oh, that's, yeah, that doesn't work. So x plus equals, let's do... Let's do this again. Then so we need to move east. And then if corner is southeast, we just change it to southwest. And then if hex row is greater than or equal to battle, Board. Uh, the number of rows we don't have, so their size divided by. Or we don't have pre calculated anyway. Okay. 
Okay, so if the row is greater than or equal to the number of rows, then we need to move uh, southeast, or yeah, southwest, because we want to stay on the same column. And then we need to switch uh, southern points. Oh, wait, actually. Okay, so this is actually a bit more complicated because southern ones we need to switch to south or yeah, northwest, but then. Oh, well, that's okay. Okay. I was worried about this last point, but this last point actually should never exist because it's completely outside the map. So I don't have to worry about that. So I don't even... Yeah, we have to always switch to southwest because if it's less than zero, the southern point should never be used. So that's fine. And same thing. Um, here, let's see again. Okay, so if this is top row and it's set... Okay, well, the southwest can actually exist because... If it was here first, it'd be shifted and then southwest. So southwest corner, I need to go um, to my southwest neighbor and then change corner to north. For the southern corner, I need to go to my southwest neighbor and change it to northeast. And then for my southeast corner, I need to go to my southeast neighbor and change it to north. It's a mouthful. Okay, this will go corner case uh, southwest. Southwest, I need to go to my southwest neighbor and change corner to north. Yeah, just north. Let's check that again. So if it's here. Southwest neighbor north point. Okay, so south, southwest neighbor, northeast point. And um, southeast, I go to my southeast neighbor and north point. Um, yeah, so southeast, I go to southeast neighbor and change the north point. So yeah, now I transform all of these points on ghost hexagons to something on a real hexagon. And so then I can get the inset Okay, so vector three inset equals terrain cells. Oh, I gotta change to the cell index. So cell index. Let's actually and um, layer. The layer is encoded in the hex, so this is actually pretty simple, but. use the corner uh, okay so there's one other wrinkle if um, the layer at for wait, um, how do I do this actually because we always return the zero so if layer is zero then set and set to zero Okay, so this should be hex layer minus one. 
Okay, so if layer is less than zero, then, oh wait, I gotta check if it's greater than or equal to zero. Yeah, this was the thing I was talking about. Since the layer, the bottom of the hexagon is zero for points and um, blocks, but then for these insets, we store the inset at the top just because that's just how it works. So we've got to kind of switch the layers around, but that's fine. So, and to be even more explicit, I'll do that. And the cell index is just hex dot to 2D index. which I think just takes, doesn't take into account the layer, which is what I want it to do. Okay, so then we would just return standard plus the inset. Okay, and that should be it. Okay, we got a null reference index outside the bounds of the array. So I wonder what is outside. Okay, well, let's do this debug log. and see if we get any weird values for this. Okay, I don't care about that one. Okay, so it works a lot of time. Eight zero 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 ten one blah blah blah. So for some reason, it's saying one one is outside. So it's probably let's see what is cell one. It's this one. So actually, that makes sense because this doesn't have a layer at index one. It's just layer at index zero. So what's going on there? So for some reason this hex layer was two. Oh, when we do this, did I mess something up? But well, it shouldn't matter because the inset should always match. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how or what to do. Let's just test the column. So we're get we're gonna get some weird values, but well, it's yeah. The indexes are fine. It's the layer. So we're just trying to figure out how are we getting higher layers than the game wants to deal with. Because when I checked. Or there were no problems. Oops. Um, let's just not deal with this right now. And see if I somehow introduced some weird mesh.
you know, I don't, seems to me that, okay, well, is this, okay, this is actually layer one, isn't it? So let me see how, but I do, I specifically say layer minus, zero, minus one, so it originally had to have been two here. Sorry about that. Okay, let's um bug log string. Okay, we're gonna get really spammed here, but that's okay. So I'll pass I don't have the original hex anymore. I should have the original corner. So now it's going to transform them and I'll see if it does anything weird. All right. Okay, so negative one, one, one should change to Zero one one southwest. I guess I should have left it open so I could look at the map. Okay, so negative one southeast. So that's this point at the top, actually. Changes to zero. Oh, wait, so actually, it's this point is first. Zero, one, one, southwest. And then the index is zero. So there's no problems there. I guess I should leave in that thing so I can see immediately before what causes the error. So we'll see where that error comes from. It. So there's a bunch of other finds. So one zero two. But yeah, why is this layer two? I don't understand. Because it's saying. Oh, I'm, going, I'm all turned around. But oh, right here. Oh, I see. It's because this point... Hmm, okay. Yeah, so it's asking for southeast on here. Yeah, so right here. But the problem is it needs this point but this block doesn't actually have that data. So... Okay, this is kind of annoying. Okay, so we can... We guarantee that wherever these points match, this values are all the same. So what I need to do actually is, like, if a certain point or hexagon doesn't have a value, I should check its neighbors. It's annoying. Okay. I 
Hey, Alfie Gamer, I'm doing pretty good. Glad you could come by. How are you doing? Fortunately, I only have about five more minutes of stream, but at least you could come for a, a bit. Okay, so let me see. If this layer... Well, then do I really need to do this? Because we could say, well, I think it is best. Okay, so... All right, let's make a diagram here. So I have three hexagons, and I'll make these different colors so I can see better. Okay, so this point is north east, or it is point zero. Um, actually, I can use my other diagram, can't I? It's not here anymore, but. Good to hear you're doing pretty good. Okay, so this has a lot of stuff I don't need anymore, but it already has this diagram of the corner indexes, so I can just use that. Um, okay, so for here, this is one. So the corner for this neighbor, I would add... Okay, what do I do actually? Oh, okay, I was getting confused, but that's because I was looking at this relationship here wasn't the same as this, but that's because this neighbor is actually this neighbor for the first corner. So yeah, I just add our rotate clockwise twice, and I would go to my the neighbor on this, or my clockwise neighbor from this point, our counterclockwise neighbor. Then my other neighbor is my clockwise neighbor, and I rotate around four times. Okay, so... Um, we'll need this, and we only have to do that if the layer is greater than or is equal to zero. Um, let me see... Private... Bool... Try... Get... And set. Oh, I forgot the int. So I just return. Well, first, I just really the only th problem that we could ever have is that the cell doesn't, or the stack isn't large enough. So if cell dot stack is, or I guess if layer is greater than or equal to the stack length, uh, then we would return false. Um, and then I guess I need to have an out vector to inset. Okay, let's not use out. I'll just use ref so that I don't have to set it to zero. And then else. So here we can actually get it because the stack is large enough and we'll return true. Okay, so let's see. If try get and set Um, let's actually change the corner to an integer. So corner, let's do this equals int corner. Oh, I really want to finish this tonight or today, but we'll see. Um, inset. Okay, so if this is false, 
Oh yeah, this should be a vector three actually. Um, and I can get rid of that. So if this is false, then we just need to check our next neighbor, which is... Okay, so counterclockwise neighbors, that means index minus one. cell index equals x plus x position axis vectors um, so it's a corner index plus our yeah so plus five which is same as going one counterclockwise but we're going Five clockwise. And then I need to take this whole thing and get two board index or two D index. All right, so if try get inset cell index inset layer. Okay, in this corner index, we need to add how much? Two, I think. Yeah, so add two, and then of course we have to do modulo in case it's, we need to loop around. And then ref inset. So if this is false, then we check the last neighbor. And if that's false, then we say, okay, well there's just no inset. So we don't really even care. So the next one is counterclockwise neighbor, which is or my clockwise neighbor, which is just the same index. Um, and again, we don't care if this fails. We would just set inset to zero, which it already is. Set layer. Um, and then we got a loop or four times, I think. So here, yeah, we go clockwise four times to get to this point. All right, and if this fails, it's just going to be stay at the default value of zero. What's the game about? Um, it's think about like Pokemon style, like team building, but then the battle system is more like Fire Emblem. That's the um, idea. But also you're going to be able to mod so you can add your own uh, like creatures and then there'll be online multiplayer. Okay, and so there I didn't get any errors at least. Let's see if the collider actually makes sense. That sounds awesome. I'm glad you think so. I think it'll be good. We're, I'm making a lot of progress, but I've been working on this train forever, so hopefully almost done. Okay, and yeah, I can see that now the collider is sticking more closely to the train, which is what I wanted. Oh, yeah, that's just because of clipping. Yeah, so now it's taking into account the, the insets. Okay. Cool, so that's a great place to stop. I did, I think I made up for starting a bit late, so. Um, but yeah, I guess I better um, call it for today and grab a bite to eat and then I have a little stuff to do offline, so. Someday I do wanna be able to stream during the afternoon, but well, I don't know, maybe soon. I should probably just say Someday I'll stream during the afternoon and then just make it work. Um, but anyway, yeah, thanks everybody for coming by. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back tomorrow around noon Eastern and we'll... What will I do? I guess there's still a little bit more to do with the collider. Or... Oh no, actually the collider is done. I just need to test um, picking with mouse, which should be good. And then I've got to do... Oh, right, I've got to do the blocking mesh because you can see. Uh, 
right here I can see a little bit through to the um, to nothingness I guess so I want to have uh, another like mesh that goes underneath all the terrain that blocks that view and so I'll work on that and I think after that we'll be finished with this terrain so I might actually make some nice looking models and everything we'll see but yeah see you Afi Gamer thanks for coming by but yeah um Feel free to follow me here on Twitch or on Twitter if you'd like to be notified when I go live. Um, I also have a YouTube channel where I post all um, my stream backlogs if you'd like to catch up on anything or just see how the game used to look. And then I have a Discord server where you can chat with me throughout the day. I'd love to have you. But I'll put links in chat and also you can check out the video description if you're watching from YouTube. But I think that's about it. Yeah, have a great day. Bye-bye.